thank you both for taking the time to speak with me. I am so thrilled to be able to speak with you. I am a childhood fan. My first concert was a Sharon Lewis and Bram concert. And I, I passed the love over to my children. I have three boys and they grew up listening to your songs. We did all the hand gestures and now I'm doing it for my nieces and nephews. And they uh -huh. actually don't even live in Canada. They live in Europe and they just love it to death. So I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's, well, it's you important. Back, thank you back, Julia, because, you know, it, hearing you say that you're passing along passing it along to your children to your relatives that's that's the nicest thing you could say to us you make the music and we really hope it will live on and on with with more and more families absolutely I can't imagine it not it's just wonderful and to be honest with you you know as I've grown up and become a parent and seen different childhood you know ch uh, children's music I should say these are the songs that just stay they stay because they're so wonderful to listen to they're not annoying to listen to <laughs> i listen to them over and over again year after year and so do my kids and my nieces and nephews so it's it's really wonderful so thank you again and I thank really you for saying all the right things <laughs> <laughs> we did um truth we did um uh, the Hillside Folk Festival in Guelph on the weekend. We did two concerts there. And the uh, Saturday afternoon, I mean, both of them really, but the Saturday afternoon in particular the, was packed mm. with grown-ups. <laughs> and many of them didn't have their kids with them. And they were singing along and doing the actions and standing up. I um, believe it. Yeah. That's great. I love that. It was memorable. It was definitely yeah. memorable. I love that so much. I mean, I went from the record to the CD and, you know, digital now. So actually that's something I really wanted to talk to you about because, you know, you started your success long before social media even could, you know, grab somebody and make them a star and, you know, let everybody hear that song that's so popular. How did you... Well, first of all, maybe if you could take me back to, you know, 1978, kind of how did that develop? How did that just take place for you? The three of us were doing music for children mm -hmm. separately. We were friends and colleagues. There was a program called Mariposa in the schools that put performers like us into the, into the school, into a classroom you know, on a freelance basis. She went in for a day. It was, and it was a great learning Bram, Bram used to say nose to nose on the floor with the kids because you really okay. got close and you got to learn. So we were all doing that. And and Mariposa in the schools thought, wouldn't it great, be great for this organization to make a record? Uh, it got it got slowed down because it's part of an organization and approvals sure. and all that. So we decided to make a record, but it was only a plan to make one record. It was not to start a career. We had never sung together and still, until we started rehearsing the songs for that record. Wow. But we, we shared a point of view, which was that children deserve the best the world has to offer. It's education, food, housing, music. And we wanted the music to appeal to the family, not just the children. So the whole, because we know if the child likes it, they're going to listen to it over and over and over. Mm -hmm. If the parent likes it, then the child's going to listen to it over and over and over. <laughs> so it, it, we applied those values to it. And, and uh, we, as I say, we didn't expect to be start, starting a career. It was truly the response to the record that launched the career. That's wonderful. And so from the success of that one, you know, album, you just decided to keep going because, because it was so popular? And I, I'm assuming you enjoyed it. You're still doing it. I love oh, that. Oh, oh, oh it was, I mean, imagine working at something that you love to do. There, mm -hmm. There's nothing better. If you have, you know, if you get to work at your passion, you're really a, yeah. a lucky person. So sure, it was the response to the record. And we said, well, let's make another one. And <laughs> people started calling us. I mean, our first sort of dramatic call came from Vancouver. The record came out in September and the following January, right after the holidays, we got a call to come to Vancouver to the Children's Festival there. Oh, and wow. so the, the music and CBC was was a factor in all of that. CBC was playing our music and doing interviews. So the career just kind of, it just kind of, 
I, I like to say that I did say that at the beginning, we were just running to keep up with all that was going on, <laughs> right? I, I would say that. And I would say that there's a little bit of that happening now at this time sure. in their evolution, because um the nature of music consumption has changed and the nature of connecting with fans has changed so um when sharon and bram did their 40th anniversary tour i was on the road with them and i was trying to learn how to live stream on instagram <laughs> and post on facebook and then we come back and tiktok is the big platform yeah. so now we have actually we've got a a huge presence on TikTok. We've had a like 1.5 million likes and, you know, we have about 130,000 people following us. So um, that's our new, that's our new challenge. And, I love that. and the know, fact we, that you're taking the challenge on, I think that that's really, it says a lot. No, really it does. I mean, I remember when TikTok came on, I mean, you know, I, my little blog has been going on for a dozen years now. And I remember TikTok coming and, you know, I was having a conversation with fellow bloggers and one said, you know, if we don't get on this, you know, we're dinosaurs, we need to get on this. And it's a constant, you know, evolution of trying to communicate with people that will enjoy the music. And I still, I can tell you right now that I was on TikTok and I saw Sharon Lois and Bram and I thought, this is the coolest thing. And so I, like you were saying, a parent, I got super excited. And my kids are, you know, starting their teen years. They're not into children's music anymore, but I just, it just got me so excited. So. Well, the good thing that, that, that it's Randy who's telling you all of this stuff because Sharon and Bram are both dinosaurs. <laughs> I mean, you should. They're happy to show up and create content. Though. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And it's fun. I mean, all of, that, yeah. all of that kind of zany stuff that we do is is fun. Yeah. So I'm, I know Bram feels the same way. Just tell us where to turn up. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think that that's actually part of the joy of that platform because, you know, the things that you did and you do in concert for children is it's not just fun for the kids, but like you're saying, it's fun for the parents. I still remember the hand gestures and being able to kind of loosen up with my kids where some parents kind of are so rigid and they think, you know, I can't, I, I'm, I don't know how to sing. I don't know how to dance. I'm not going to do this. And it's just, it gives the opportunity to parents to be able to just relax with their children. And I think that's kind of what TikTok does too, if you're into it. <laughs> Yeah. I think that, that parents learn fairly quickly that if you want your child to do it, you better do it too. Yeah. It's a good role model and it beats therapy if you get up and you, you know. <laughs> I, I, would, I would say that one of the surprising things for us on TikTok is that the adults are the consumers. Mm -hmm. So we get messages Memory Unlocked is a very common one. And I love it. Thank you for making my childhood safe when I felt unsafe. Oh, and wonderful. the do like a uh, video like Wadali Acha, which was um, also a cheer or a camp song or whatever. We get thousands of people duetting with us and sharing their version. And it's all grown ups, it's not yeah. children. <laughs> so there's clearly still an appetite. Definitely. And, the need, and a need that's being satisfied by participating in that. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think one of the things for me anyway is, um, I don't know if you're familiar, but I don't share my children online. They don't have accounts online. And so I will find content like yours to be able to share with them. So where you might not be seeing the children consuming that, they might oh. be on the other that's, side with their parents. Uh, so that's, that's the great thing. That's lovely to hear. That's really interesting. That's yeah. probably part of you too. <laughs> so I have with me your new book and it's beautiful. So thank you first for sending it to me. It is so lovely. <laughs> and I just kind of wanted to we have it. Oh, we have it. There we go. <laughs> of course we do. We okay. just 
we just got it. Yeah. We just I, got it. I've had one copy only. I had the only copy in Canada. <laughs> we just got it. Wonderful. It's beautiful. And Thank I you. love the continuation of the story, the expansion of the story. So I really, really love that. And I, I know for a fact also, I had read that there were some kind of Easter eggs in this illustration, in these illustrations. I found a couple. I don't think I found them all. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that there's what so much what to it. I found the five little monkeys. I was looking for a uh, little rabbit Fufu, but I didn't see her. To see, maybe she's there. I didn't see her. No. no. I, <laughs> um, but what was the? And maybe you can tell me some of the Easter eggs along the way. But what was the idea behind this book? What made you decide to do this now and expand the story like you did? Randy, talk. <laughs> with the, wrote it. So with the success Beautiful. of the Skinner Marink book, um, we were expecting to sell about 5,000 copies of that. That's a best selling children's book in Canada. And I think we're at 90,000 now. So um, by September, we were at, I, I remember vividly, we were at um, a book festival in Hamilton. Do you remember what it's called? I'm sorry, I don't remember. But the editor, the senior editor was there with us, the woman that my mom and Bram had met with initially to talk about the first book. And I said, I have ideas for the second book. <laughs> um, and um, so I, I sat with the editor, Liz Cribs of, of Skin and Marine, and we talked about all of the favorite Sharon Lois and Bram songs. And we picked the next two. So it's One Elephant and Peanut Butter. So oh, we actually wonderful. have- Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Another book coming out next April. So once, um, once we decided on One Elephant, I had a vision of, of what I wanted it to be, which was a, a magical trip through the jungle. And- we thought it would be fun maybe to have some kids in animal costumes, but really once I had created the narrative and sort of told the things that I wanted in it, that really that we wanted, we wanted it to be inclusive like the Skin and Marine book was. We right. wanted children to find themselves on the pages. We, um, we wanted a nod to the, um, LGBTQ2 plus community. So right. that that Easter egg. Love it. It's a, you <laughs> know, it's on the spine, but it's also if you look at Bram's guitar strap. Yes. It, Bram's guitar strap in real life is a rainbow. I love that. So we I really, love that so much. We really wanted that. We wanted yeah parents to be able to look at the books with their kids and then when the kids got old enough to look at them that they would still be finding things so you're going to find a spider and a fly mm -hmm. on every page <laughs> so sometimes the fly is a little easier to see than others oh I love that so they can look for it on each page yeah we wanted it to it inadvertently became a counting book mm -hmm. so um we wanted people to be able to see who's waiting to come onto the web. And we wanted them to be able to count who is on the web. Mm. Um, and in the recording of the song, you, you found the five little monkeys. In the recording, we say, no more monkeys jumping on the web. And then we <laughs> that. So that was, that was um, Bram's idea. I That's think great. that one. Yeah. I love That's it. And so this is just coming out and you've yeah. already got the second book in, in, in the works. Um, this is you, the second book. This is the second book. And then yes. the peanut butter the, book is coming. So we have. It's a long, it's, yeah, you know about the Skinner Room book. Yes. Yeah, yeah so, a, so the book industry is different than recording. Sure, it's yeah. Long, <laughs> it's a really, I mean, we had to learn that and it's a tough learn because when, we figure when it's done, okay, let's get it out now. And it's not the way it, the way it works, of course. Yeah. So the, the Skin and Rink book, they've just turned it into a board book. Okay. Yes, I saw that. Um, they, we haven't seen it yet, but it's. Well, Bram saw it. 
He saw Where it at Costco. At Costco. I saw oh, you're kidding. You're nope. kidding. Nope. It's out at Costco and not in our hands? Uh, <laughs> we, yeah. well, that's hilarious. That's yeah. I mean, I have no babies. Oh, well, I could give it to my next door neighbor. They just had a baby. <laughs> There's always someone to give your content to. It's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Did you um, get a chance to listen to the song that accompanies the story? I haven't listened to the song. My apologies, but I it's on my list as soon as we get off. And I will definitely talk about it within the post because I, I you know, I have this CD at home. This was the CD that I introduced my kids to. And, you know, of course you have hundreds of hits, but these were the songs that I introduced my children to. And I just think it's wonderful that more music is coming out for, for children. And I, I just love that. I love that you were able to make a new song to this. I wonder, well, oh, yeah. that was, that was pretty cool, but we also created, I don't know if you, if you know about this, but this That's is that too, Randy. Good. Sharon Lois and Bram, best of the best live. Love that. Um, so we're still trying to, mom, why don't you tell Julia what it is? It's what's so interesting is that it's, it's a way it's found music. I mean, it, there were cassette copies, recordings of concerts we did between 1989 and 93 that we had forgotten about. I, I don't remember that at all that, that we had done them. And one, somebody knew about them and said, you know, one of our fans, one of our adult fans who's more strongly connected to us. And he said, you know, can we make copies of them? Anyway, we, we digitized all of that. And Bram and I started listening. Everybody started, Randy and, and the rest of our team. But Bram and I started listening and said, oh, you can never make a record. You know, it'll never happen. <laughs> Skeptics that we were. <laughs> anyway, that's what Best of the Best Live is. It's, it's concerts between 89 and 93. They all include Lois, of course, because we were touring in those days. It has the energy of a concert. It has the audience. So we're we made an album out of it and and we're thrilled about it actually i'm sure well i have to get my hands on that too because yeah. i know uh, as soon as i hear you in concert i will be brought back to my childhood and remember that i still have vivid remember memories from being in the audience and that's a long time ago <laughs> where, <that's, laughs> what i remember what city would it have been in montreal montreal uh, god mm -hmm. we used that Montreal audiences were different than anywhere else. At one, <laughs> at one point, our drummer at the time, who was originally from Montreal as well, after the show, we, we came backstage and he said, they're offering their children up to you. You know, people <laughs> audience was at the, front of the stage holding their kids up. It was, it was the, the kind of energy that you get in Montreal. It's kind of, <laughs> kind of a one of a kind experience. <laughs> I've, I've heard that before, but it's very interesting to hear that from and you, Sharon, love, with children. Oh, yes. <laughs> We've recently unearthed some additional um, recording treasures that are in amazing condition. So um, one of the things that's amazing about Best of the Best Live and about that opportunity is it's a chance to uh, include Lois mm -hmm. in a way that we can't in the concerts. So um, we, we get to share music that people have maybe never heard before because often they did things in concert that they didn't necessarily record in the same way on a record. Okay. So we have a holiday concert we're very excited about, which we're hoping to release. And we um, are now working on a country and Western compilation. Oh, that's album great. Called, I you know, a little bit country, so that's fantastic and I you know you you said at the beginning of this conversation that you're doing something you have been doing something your career is something that you love but the fact that you're able to adjust it and change it with everything that you know has changed in technology and music and publications like you're saying I think that's wonderful and it just shows how much you are ready to creatively expand which is something that I think is really important for all of us, really. Absolutely. And, and sometimes my daughter drags us kicking and screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Creative expansion. 
the thing is when you get older it's e <clears throat> sometimes easier to not do things like that but it's very stimulating it is it is to, to, to grow and to, to have the energy and all of that and i have the energy so most of the time you sure <laughs> but do you're not, i mean you're not wrong i mean age is really just a number and when it comes to technology it changes so quickly that you know you can feel totally out of the loop very quickly and you either take it or or you leave it and i think it's great that you're taking it yes yes <laughs> so we had we had vinyl to cassette to cd yep to cd rom to um mp3 to streaming and now people are releasing cassettes and vinyl again so yep. that's, that's incredible yes that yes what? it's it's a collector's it's thing. a movement <laughs> it's the a thing, nostalgia mu movement the thing that happened for us is that when we on vinyl the vinyl was like that kids would walk around carrying the album cover because there we were on the front, they felt the, the connection yeah. on a cassette, forget it. So <laughs> I'll tell you, Bram told me a funny story yesterday about the Vancouver Children's Festival. He said that after the concert, they were walking, you know, through the crowd or whatever. And a little boy said to Bram, okay, you can go back in the record now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's adorable. Yes. I love that so much. <laughs> okay, well, I won't take too much more of your time, but I did want to address the mother daughter relationship, because I think it's fantastic that you two are working together. And I'm just curious, and I'm sure my readers would be curious as moms, how that came about and what made it happen. I, I know it's not as recent as now, but when did it happen? And how did it happen? Randy um, used well, I, you know, in our family, music was always a part of our family. So when I was growing up, um, I was about 13 when Sharon Lowe and Bram recorded their first record. But my dad was very involved in instrumental in vocal arrangements and instrumental arrangements and composing songs for them. So we would sit around a piano and work on harmony lines together. Um, so that happened right away. Then when Sharon Olson Bram started performing, if I was at the concerts, I would sell the records after the show okay. or I would put on the elephant costume. Um, sometimes I would just be on the road with them hanging out because it was fun to be on the road with them. I worked in their office. I worked on the elephant show looking for songs for them. I, I helped them curate musical content. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I always had my hands in there. And um, for their 35th anniversary, they were planning a party. And I don't know if it was my mom or Lois who said, why don't we get Randy to help us a little bit with the party? So a little then, bit, a little bit. <laughs> in other words, <laughs> all of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that happened. And then when Lois died, we wanted to to honor and celebrate her life and the Sharon Lois and Bram legacy so we put together a celebration and really out of that um Red produced it just came a desire for me to you know make sure that the legacy was remembered and honored in a meaningful way so um we talked about how could that be achieved and it just turned into me sort of managing things for everybody um so and the one thing I didn't mention or forgot about probably didn't forget um, is that we used to do um, a benefit in Toronto for at Christmas time. It's called Riverdale Share, and if they they support project projects within the community, it's a really great event. And we used to sing the first time we did it. Probably all three of us did it, and but generally Bram was away during that time of the year. So Lois and I did it together a couple of times and then she wasn't feeling well one time and she said, why don't you get Randy to do it with you? And, and Randy said, sure, great. If we, well, she knew the song for sure. We were going to do the 12 
days of Christmas and eventually we get in a ring. And then she asked her boys who were younger, you know, at the time, and they were game. And <laughs> I, it amazed me that even when they were older, you know, teenagers that maybe think that was uncool, they were game to do it and they had fun. And so, so it's Randy being on stage singing with us, with me, was a natural thing. And of course, as she said, you know, in our home, we sang together a lot. That's wonderful. And so, and I don't, I don't want to, um, you know, bring up something sad, but I, and I, uh, I will tell you that I've lost both my parents and sometimes, you know, music is so powerful and it's so special and it brings back memories like we were talking about. And there were some times where I would sing these songs and I would get emotional because it's the memories of, you know, when my parents were around and we used to sing a song. So tell me a little bit about, you know, was there a time that you kind of took a pause um, after Lois? Did Was there um, a difficult time uh, that you had? Two after? things I, I want to say in when you talk about how you sometimes feel and those memories, often we meet people, I meet people who say, you know, that, that they grew up on me and then they get weepy and, <laughs> and then they're embarrassed. And I say, don't be embarrassed about feeling weepy because you're really remembering happy childhood memories. Sure. And that's, and that's a good thing. And that's really what you're describing. Yeah. Now, you have to, in, in terms of the, Lois's death, um, Lois stopped performing many years before that. Like okay. 20 years after we started singing, she stopped performing. And it was right, it was shortly after her husband died. And she, I think it's fair to say that she never fully recovered yeah. from that. Terrible loss for her. Mm -hmm. We were all like a big family. We, everybody knew everybody. We were all sure. very strongly connected so she said she didn't want to perform anymore she had no problem and Bram and I were not ready to stop she Lois had no problem with us continuing which mm -hmm. we did and and of course we we saw each other a lot our lives were very much intertwined and you know before she died she got sick mm -hmm. and you know Randy and I were on the case there checking her taking her to a doctor or to the hospital whatever and uh, so but her, you know, I mean, she was dying. We knew she was dying. You can know someone's dying and it's still a terrific blow when it happens. Absolutely. You know? So so it was a terrible loss for us, but it was not a performance loss because mm -hmm. she wasn't doing that. However, we have the legacy of all that she did with us. Yes. And that never goes away. And, and, you know, that's sort of a gift to be able to hold on to that. And that gift is living on for so many more generations. That and that's wonderful. Yeah, that gives us a lot of pleasure. Uh, I'll tell you, um, when my father was dying of cancer, mm -hmm. um, Sharon and Bram had a bunch of concerts that they had already arranged to do. And Lois stepped out of retirement to fill in for my mom on a, on a couple of those concerts. She was like, I am uniquely qualified to help you <laughs> with that situation. And, and she did. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, that's family. That's a real yep. family. 100%. 100%. Well, I can't thank you enough for this time. I really appreciate it. And I telling you, this is like, uh, what, what was the hashtag that you said? A childhood unlocked or something that memory that's, unlocked. memory unlocked. So this is a new memory from a memory that I had as a child. So I appreciate it so, so much. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with my readers? They're, you know, most sure. moms of young children. I will be the first person to say that this is the music that they should be just jumping to as soon as they have babies. I was singing these songs before my kids could even move their hands. <laughs> so. Good. I'm going to tell you a couple of upcomings. Yeah, well, we have, um, we have, um, a documentary film crew has been working with us and we're working on a feature film about um, the Sharon Wilson Bram legacy and the magic. So it's called Skin and Marink Forever. And, uh, you know, it takes a while to complete these things, but we're working on that. And we're working on a concert which is going to be filmed in Toronto, a live concert special celebration on the 5th of November. 
and um, uh, we're doing a book event in Arnprior, which is near Montreal, okay. on, in September um, at, a, at a bookstore in Arnprior. I think it's September 23rd. You know what? I'll get all that information and post it underneath Great. for sure. That's lovely. lovely. That's wonderful. Yeah. So lots of goodies coming Lots up. of stuff. And um, my mom and I have been doing, we're going to be in Peterborough doing a concert. We're going to be in Massachusetts. We're doing a whole bunch of, of uh, family shows. That's wonderful. As well. Hopefully well, we'll get to Montreal. Oh, that would be wonderful. I'll be one of those parents in the front, maybe without, without my kids dancing along. You'll bring your nieces and nephews. I will. I would, I would love that. If they're in town, I would love that. I just, I, I really truly break out into song sometimes with them. And That's sometimes they catch me off guard, you know, they're, they're caught off guard and they think, what are you doing lady? And then they get into it because it's a lot of fun. And I think that, you know, I have met over the years, a few families, a few parents, even, you know, people online that randomly will say, I just can't listen to children's music. My kids have to listen to the radio. My kids have to listen to the music that I like, which I understand. I do understand sometimes. Um, but I think it is such a gift, as we were saying, to be able to, you know, get down to their level and not just for the children, but for us to be able to let loose and have fun and you know really enjoy music that will make them happy and move with them and I just I encourage it so much so I just want to thank you again for all the music that you've provided for so many families thank you thank you so much nice to meet you nice to yep. meet you too happy blogging thank you